Welcome back, fellow preppers and survivalists. Today, we're going to have a course on quantum and nuclear physics for preppers. So grab your power drill. Why do you need a power drill? Well, you're about to find out. And at the end of this, you'll know why some materials, like lead, are good for some forms of radiation. And other forms of radiation I stopped by just a thin sheet of paper or something similar. But some forms of radiation need water to stop it. And will go right through the steel of a tank or lead plates. And all of these forms come about from the detonation of a nuclear weapon. It just depends on where you are. So how exactly does uh, radiation work anyway? You probably have heard of the inverse square law, or you might remember some old high school physics, or if you ever took it, or maybe you never did, but uh, basically radiation works with the inverse square law. If you double the distance to a radiation source, you get one-fourth the radiation from it. And triple the distance, you get one-ninth the distance one-ninth radiation, so that's called one over distance squared. And how that works is basically if the radiation particle is the same size and is just radiating in all directions, then its apparent size to you, its apparent cross-section determines how much radiation gets to you. So if something is twice as far away, its diameter is half, but that means its area is one-fourth. That's why radiation drops with one over distance squared. That's why distance is your main helper. So how do different radiation sources work? So neutrons, think of them as like pool balls. And when you billiards ball, when you hit a bumper on the edge of the table, that's like hitting an infinitely massive object. It bounces back with the same speed that it went in. But if it hits another ball, it bounces back with like half its speed and the other ball flies off with half the speed. That's how neutrons work, since they only bounce off of nuclei, they basically will, uh, because they have no electric charge, so they don't interact with the electrons, um, they pretty much only interact with nuclei. So it turns out lead or steel are very heavy. So a neutron that hits steel, like the armor of a tank or something, will just keep bouncing around forever, not really losing energy. Whereas a neutron that hits like a bottle of water loses its energy very quickly to the water because the hydrogen in the water is basically like a pool ball and it's like billiards ball and it bounces off so it loses its energy really quickly that's why water is used in nuclear reactors as neutron moderators neutron shielding what this means is if you're inside a tank like a steel battle tank it uh, doesn't protect you at all from neutrons although it does a good job against gamma, but not against neutrons. What you want is, and also that's why the people inside absorb the neutrons and basically take lethal radiation damage. Whereas a pool of water, for example, would absorb all the neutrons. So neutrons are a special case. Now X-rays and gamma rays are a different story. So X-rays and gamma rays, X-rays come from inner shell electrons, gamma rays come from the nucleus it also turns out that they interact with electrons. So really heavy atoms that have many electrons, like lead atoms, for example, will tend to absorb electron, uh, gamma rays and x-rays well. Whereas atoms that have light nuclei have too few electrons, so like water doesn't absorb gamma rays very well. So gamma rays go through water, but get absorbed by steel or lead. Uh, very well just because of the number of electrons Also, you might hear the story of how microwaves are like nuking something That's not really true. Basically microwaves are tuned to cause water to rotate the Rotation is the easiest and lowest form of energy in a molecule almost so pretty much microwaves will uh, Just warm up water, but they have nothing to do with nuking in any way. They don't have any nuclear interactions same thing with infrared. Infrared usually are vibrations inside the molecules themselves. Alpha and beta particles are interesting because alpha particles have a plus two charge. 
so they will tend to fly through and interact with electrons as well as the as well as the nuclei so alpha particles tend to get stopped by almost anything beta particles are smaller beta particles will tend to go through a little further but still mostly get absorbed by just like a the foot of water or so and again beta particles get absorbed because they have electric charge so they interact with electrons very well alpha particles pretty much interact with everything not only do they ionize electrons and lose energy that way they will also collide with nuclei and because these are ma relatively massive because they're essentially helium nuclei they will lose a lot of energy no matter what they hit beta particles would not lose much energy when they collide with a nucleus because again the beta particle is like one one thousandth the mass of a of a proton or a neutron because it's basically just an electron neutrons however have an annoying feature in that sometimes when they collide with a nucleus they will actually merge with it and turn that nucleus into a active or that is a radioactive material this is referred to as neutron activation also because neutrons um, tend to only be slowed down by hydrogen note that air is made up of oxygen and nitrogen which are much heavier than hydrogen atoms this means neutrons tend to bounce around in air a lot instead of being absorbed this is called air glow so neutrons from the initial blast will cause things to become neutron radioactive that is they'll become activated which often tends to generate more neutrons as those new activated materials decay it just happens to be that neutrons tend to be generated by those decay mechanisms as well but because of the phenomenon that i described as air glow that is neutrons tend to bounce around a lot from heavy oxygen and nitrogen nuclei which are kind of like the bumpers in a pool table instead of uh, being hit by another billiards ball um, that means neutron radiation can go around corners instead of going in straight lines that means if you've uh, dug yourself a shelter like this one with these wood poles with a really heavy pile of dirt on top of it the neutrons can go in around like this around the corner you might be able to stop it with uh, buckets of water or water bricks or barrels of water or even just piles of plastic really thick blocks of plastic fortunately neutrons are unlikely to be a problem for most scenarios except very close to uh, ground zero right after the bomb has gone off because the bomb initially creates a large amount of neutrons which will create um, activated materials now this next section i'm going to be focusing on immediate or direct fallout that is these uh, heavy sand grain particles that rain out of the high altitude clouds and they start uh, immediately upon cooling of the initial mushroom cloud roughly 30 minutes after the blast close to ground zero and a few hours after the blast uh, maybe 50 miles away now if you went under a bridge you'll notice that it's quite thick this is the typical cross section of a overpass a heavy concrete overpass so fallout will land up here and will also land down here so if you're standing here you're going to be shielded from here but you're going to get hit by radiation from the sides here same thing here if you're down here the fallout will land here and here and here you'll be fairly well shielded from up there but you will get hit by streams from here 
Now, you're going to be somewhat far away, especially if the if, if this is a wide structure. So you're going to get some significant shielding. But if you can get yourself up here, then you're going to be very well shielded, at least if you can stay here for a couple hours or even two days. Um, have your different members of your family you can hide up here, or even just up here. I mean, it's not as far, but this angle here will actually keep a lot of fallout that doesn't have good angles to you away from you. So just kind of hiding up here, there's going to be a significant protection zones here. And, and the further up here, there's going to be very high protection zones. Here it's not so good because you're going to get streamed from here or here. But here, you're going to get shielded even from streaming from nearby fallout because of these structures here. So this hiding up here would be a very good place. It would be heavily shielded. A very high protection factor. It's be you it might be like hiding inside one of those underground bunkers if you're if you only have like six feet of packed dirt. This concrete and steel is going to be better than that. Now let's talk houses. If this is a standard typical house, fallout will land here and here, and some of it will collect on the roof here. Hopefully, some of it will fall down and fall here. Some of it will stick up here. If you are hiding in the basement you're going to be hit from here and this will go straight through this like as if there's nothing there um, partially blocked by your block cinders here if you can have bags of sand or extra concrete or whatnot reinforcing this to make it thicker you, you want like two feet here instead of just the few inches that you'll get plus these might be hollow or concrete filled they're not going to be as thick as you want. If you can get this to be at least two feet thick, then you'll be well shielded here, except from the fallout that'll radiate to you here. But you'll be well shielded from fallout that falls to the ground or that tries to radiate sideways from the ground. So this will give you a reasonable protection factor here, except for this fallout here. So. People have analyzed uh, houses and have decided that uh, you might get a protection factor of two or three in these kinds of scenarios. This scenario here where you have a slab, not very well protected at all, but the advantage is you can put a lot more weight here. So in theory, you could pile sandbags inside and protect yourself if you kind of live here, but you're not going to be protected from any streaming radiation from the ceiling or from the roof so fallout that lands here is still going to get you again protection factor might be two or three you could get very heavy protection factors from the side if you can pile up lots of stuff here but you could have just piled up stuff here too and just live down here instead for buildings with basements and multiple floors if you stay here pile up sandbags here then you've got a much greater distance to the fallout that's on your roof that's good that'll win you an extra factor of four remember it goes as the square of the distance but not much more and you're still unshielded from the sides um, even unless you pile up some stuff here but you might have to put rocks here and concrete here instead but if you go inside down here you'll have different levels of protection depending on how close you are to the walls. The worst place to be is here. Whereas on the first floor, the best place to be is here, but on the basement, it's the worst place, even though it's better than here, but it's still the worst place among basement spots. This is a good place in the basement because you are almost fully shielded here. Only the little bits that are here that might stream towards you are gonna get you. And if you put some sandbags here, and um, before the fallout falls, such that they're under here, then you will stop the fallout that's here from radiating to you. You will base it, create a shielded zone here. So this can have a protection factor of 10 or even 20 or even higher. I think uh, these protection factors have been analyzed. Again, I'll have to find where. So again, here's a generic basement shielding fact. I've drawn these things here already. Um, 
shielding factors can be fairly high in these low corners down here and poorer here because you are going to get streamed from here and also you will get streaming from through the building from the roof everywhere so that's why you don't get protection factors of hundreds because you will take streaming radiation from the roof even when you're down here so you could pile some stuff up here but you can't uh, much that's why fallout shelters from the the do-it-yourself fallout shelters always include heavy bricks and rocks and concrete up here inside a shelter that gets built like this. You'll see that in the various pamphlets from the 60s. Tall buildings. Fallout will land here. Fallout will land here. Fallout will land here and here. So the best places to be are here and here. Do not be here because you're right next to fallout. Do not be here, right next to fallout. Not here, right next to fallout. This one is not that great because you're too close here and here. This might be the best place. You've got fallout coming, you've got radiation here, and you've got radiation here. Another good place would be to hide in the shadows, shadow corners down here. Not here because you're getting streamed and you're only winning distance, you're not winning any absorption. So in the corners, on the lowest floor, that's where you want to be, and low down on the corner, not just standing up, because then your head is getting radiated. You want to be down low, crouched down in the corner. Overpass, again, this time slightly wider overpass. Again, fallout lands here, fallout lands here, fallout lands here. The best case scenario, this is a side view of the same. If you can have a little structure like this, that's the best place. So the cars would be basically here. This would be the tires of the cars, the windshield of the car. It's not a very good car drawing, but to get the idea, the car is coming towards you or away from you. You climb up here and you stay here or you drill into the concrete with some concrete anchors, put some wood and build yourself a little ledge and just try to stay as high as possible. Have your buckets of your latrine, your water filters, whatever else you, your, your, your homemade Berkey, perhaps a latrine up there too, and a sleeping platform so you can build your own Thing if you brought your tools and some wood and some concrete anchors you could build yourself a little platform and live for two weeks up here so as a quick homemade last-minute fallout shelter bring your box of tools with batteries and concrete anchors and some short pieces of uh, wood uh, and build yourself a truss work and a platform and you can stay up there.